like the first country we've previewed in tomorrow's game at the Maiden Cottage. We will start as normal. We have half an hour for this media session. We will start 15 minutes broadcast and then 15 minutes broadcast. So, Dan from Sky, would you like to start? Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. First of all, we're just going to start with team news. Uh, we saw Alexander Mitrovic train this morning. How is he? It's getting better. Um, of course, he did the, the warm up with the team, did some some boxes, and today the session was more strategy to the match. Of course, um, I can tell you that was the, the first day he was he was involved with the team. Um, after the two weeks, two weeks and a half uh, without without the team, now we are checking, me, assessing him how he is feeling as well. We'll do the same. Um, later this evening to take uh, to the decision if he'll be involved in the squad list or not. But he's, he's still soon. Um, let's see what will happen next few hours. Are you optimistic he could be part of the squad list on the bench? Uh, let's see. Of course, it's a decision that I have to take later. Um, and I will do it for sure. Um, I will meet with the medical staff, my technical staff as well, and after to take the decision. And how are a few of the other players who had injuries like William, Tate and Kojo? Uh, William will be involved. Um, Kenny, Kenny will be will, will be out like uh, like Cruzao as well. Okay. And how are they? Just with their injuries, morale wise, are they okay? I think um, let's see. It's like you know when when the, you have this type of muscle injuries, you have even if they are doesn't look really serious and and big ones, you have to to be careful and to to assess day by day to to. And to improve a little bit the, their work in a daily basis to see when they'll be fully ready to involve to be involved with the team. And just talking about the football, does it worry you at all conceding seven goals in the last two games, or do you think it was kind of unfortunate for the circumstances with the red card, etc.? I don't like. I hate to concede goals, even if our philosophy is to to go to the match to to try to score more than the the opposition side. Of course. The, the clean sheet at this level is something really important and is something that um, is always in our dressing room, is always something that they listen from, from us and we work to achieve it and we work to achieve it as well every single day. Of course, I don't like, as I said before, um, different circumstances for the, for the game, two different games as well. It was a heavy result against Newcastle, even if you played 85 minutes with 10 with 10 players. It was I told you after the match against Newcastle, and that probably even with 10 players, two three of that goals we we should have done better. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I think the, the third the third goal is a good example after the, the save from Berno. I can tell you probably that the second goal that was an amazing goal from Almiron. Um, be all the other three we we have work on it because we have to to do better okay. looking for the last game if you want to talk about the three goals we conceded okay um up to us to work but when the second and the third goals all of us we saw all the things happen uh, first goal, first goal was a penalty that unfortunately was against us let's hope uh, in the other box will be um in the future for us as well um, and the other two goals, they, they should be disallowed. That is that's clear. Um, in a normal circumstances, in a normal football, should be disallowed both goals. Even so, we the work we did um, during the, that you have done with our players during this week was to to improve in that situation. First goal, the second goal. Sorry, of course, um, in our alignment we should. And have done better in that moment in our alignment. The reaction from our central defender as well. But the reality that is something that we we can't control. That the two goals they should be disallowed. That is not a normal football. Football is to play with the feet, not with the hands. And just finally from you, what have you made of Bournemouth under Gary O'Neill? And also, how have they perhaps changed from when you played them last year? Nah, last year was last year. It's completely different, of course. Now a different manager as well, um, but last season was different competition, and we had two tough games against them, two different games, but two two good games if I can say as well. 
course, uh, under Gary, they, they have been improving. That is the true. I think the last it's one of the, the, the teams in best form um, right now. A very good reaction from, from them. They are, they are much more confident at getting good results because the quality was, was there. And of course, it's good to, um, to see them in a, in, a, in a good level because they are, they are a good team. They come... They fought, uh, they fought like us last season to be at, the, at this level, and it's good to see them in a good level. It will be a, another very good game uh, against them, I, I, I believe. Tough one to to play, but we are at home. We want to to react from the the last two two games, different ones, different games. It's a bit strange games, if I can if I can say for us. But again, we are at this level. We have to adapt quick um, to react in some moments quick for some mistakes that can come from the match like the the, the first penalty against West Ham what we, we should do in a different way mistakes from the, the the referees as well and from ourselves we have to react with, to be more mature in some moments of the game to challenge the, the opposition sides but uh, I agree with you tough game good team that we'll play against they are in a good moment they are playing at home you want to to react and to, to get the three points and we have to work really hard to get it and to try to play better than them because you know that if we play better we'll be close to in the football match. Hi Marco, how are you? Hi, good, thank you. You said you still don't know whether Mitrovic will play tomorrow but I just wanted to ask you how much it does affect the team when Mitrovic is on the pitch. He's a key player for us, no doubts about it, but uh, I have to, to tell you that uh, Last three games, Mitrovic didn't score, and the team scored four goals in three games. It's not a, a, a bad thing as well. Um, three games you score four goals, even without your best best score and um, a top top player and a very important player for us. Show that we, we can score even if he's not on on the pitch. And um, I think last last two games, and they were different. Um, we haven't win. It's not because Mitrovic wasn't wasn't there. Um, some things should concern much more ourselves than the, that situation. Things to improve, not just because Mitro was not was not there. I know that Vinicius is adapting in our in our football club. Just arrived in the last day of the market. Just one man and half in our football club. He has to keep improving, keep adapting in our in our philosophy as well. Different football, even if he knew from the, the season at, at Tottenham. Um, and Mitro is Mitro and is different because that is so important for us and because that he scored so many goals last season and was a key player and he's being a key player so far this season as well and we'll keep doing the, the same. Um, but it's not just him. I think we, I think now I'm sure if you have all the players available, we'll be stronger. As you know, our, our squad is not a really deep, deep, deep squad. And of course, when you have key players, they are, they are injured or they are out for some reason, of course. Uh, we are not at our best level, but football is like that, and uh, it's a moment for the others to pop up as well and to show their quality. Back to back defeats in the Premier League for the first time this season. How damaging have the last two results been to the mood, to the morale here? No, it's always different. Uh, when you work so hard to, to win football matches, it's always difficult when you don't win football, the football match. This is the, the thing. Um, we, we, we hate really to, to lose matches. This is a good thing, the, 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 the feeling in the dressing room. Um, two different feelings the last two games. Um, the first one uh, against Newcastle was completely different than the last one. The last one was something probably... I, I hope will not happen, not just for us, for all the teams in this league until the end of the season is what I hope. Um, last game against uh, against West Ham. Then Newcastle was something something different. Um, the circumstances we have played um, made the things really difficult for us. Even if you should do different in some moments of the game, definitely. But we have worked in in these two two games as always. Last game we analyzed. We we did what we 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 should do. We prepare ourselves well, and we go again. Um, it's a marathon. We know that we'll not win every single match at this level. Um, it's up to us, like we did in when you get good results, to analyze, to keep working with the players to them to improve, avoid some, some things that we, we, should, we should do as well. Let's go again. Let's go for the next one. You mentioned earlier how important it is to keep a clean sheet. 
You kept just one clean sheet yeah. in the league this season. Have you put an emphasis on, on tightening up at the back in training? How much does it concern you? It's not concerning. It's something that I don't like. And, and if I see other teams um, scoring on a goal that all the credits to them and all situations, I'm here the first one, even if I will keep working with my team, saying, OK, credits to them, they involve us, they went to one side, the other side, they create, or a player did a, something fantastic and scored an amazing goal. Last, uh, and for us, last few few goals we conceded, or some of the goals we conceded this season, was, wasn't what happened. That is the, the true um, game against Newcastle, even with 10-man. It's a good example, apart from the goal from Almiron, all the others um, should do much, much better. And last game, more or less the same. Okay, one was, was penalty and the other two, even in, if they were, they should be disallowed with the handball. Uh, we should do better, that is the thing. And it's my job to work with the situations we can control. Um, it's not a matter of concerning, it's clear something that we must improve, definitely. Not, it's not just the goalkeepers or the defenders. I think we, as a, as a, as a team, we, we must improve definitely that, in that moment. Clean sheet tomorrow. We work for it, for sure. <coughs> Thanks, Alex. Uh, Emma. Hello. Mark, yeah. hello. Hi. Um, you can't dwell, can you, on the disappointments of the last two matches? Because you, can, you can understand you'd be frustrated and disappointed by those two defeats and the nature of them. But is it important not to dwell on that? No, we know. Um, we were not over the moon when we were um, winning games and getting results. And we are not... Um, we, we deal with, with, with the situation. Um, uh, we did well. We, we deal well with that situation because we know. We know, um, and the most important thing for us is to understand why the things happen on the pitch. When you do well, and uh, wh when you get points, when you get three points, when you win football matches, why that things happen. Uh, at the same time, when you are losing or or not get the three points or 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 draw a game or something like that, you have to understand why that things happen as well. I think the last two two games. And apart from the technical and tactical things that we, we work on it and we have to improve, all the other things I think um, was clear for everyone that follows football, all the things happen. And I think the last game was, and for, for, for us and for, for the football as well, was a good example. Uh, this is a match between two promoted sides. Um, is it tougher to get promoted or is it tougher to stay in the Premier League, do you think? Different competitions, completely different challenge as well. Um, cannot win um, anything, a title or a promotion without being really hard to get it. At the same level, to get to be successful at Premier League um, is something really tough. I think we can't compare because there are different competitions, um, different squads as well, even the same clubs, different squads. Things are different this season and last season in terms of squad for us. Uh, as you know, we lost some some really important players for us. We get some important players that they are settled well in our in our team. You have to 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 embrace the challenge. It's difficult to compare. Really. Uh, Scott Parker lost his job quite early in the season. He wasn't uh, the first of many managers to lose their jobs quite early. Um, what is the situation with him? Is he aware of that? Um, he is you think it's different than championship? I don't have the numbers now, but probably in the championship. Maybe just in terms of being a football manager in general. Do you, are you aware of how? Ah, okay. It's not because the. Yeah. No, that's football, and probably now um, for you here in in England, maybe it's becoming a little bit more. The number is increasing more than than normal in the past uh, as well. Um, in different cultures and different countries, um, it's a little slightly different than, than than here. I know that in the past year, uh, normal the, the manager have much more time to, to settle, to prepare, much more years to do something important. And of course, I think it's it's something important. I think the time normal will give the reason for the people that uh, they stick with when when idea, when philosophy, and they support the. The manager they have, and um, I think we have very good examples at the level we are at Premier League, and teams they are in the top right now. What the, what they did, the way they support their their, their managers, but okay, 
it's not for me to answer for that. And uh, that's football. We have to to deal with it. And you know that at the end, the most important thing are the results. And um, we have to work again. We have to to do what we can control. And what we can control is to work with with the players and to um, to get the best from them. Finally, for me, I know you've mentioned that you've seen goals from elsewhere if Alexander Mitrovic isn't scoring, but uh, Carlos Vinicius coming in, do you think you've, you've brought him into a team earlier than you would have preferred to? Yes. Because of the absence of... Yes, him? yes. And do you okay. think he's now more ready? To there are the circumstances, you know, that is... Um, I can remember, remember that... Uh, Probably two days in our football club or three days, even without working with the team, he had probably 15, 20 minutes against Tottenham, uh, away from home. Um, and uh, of course, after after that, with the, the, when Mitro got got to the the injured, it's a moment for him to to be to be involved. Um, first match was really tough for him against 10 men with the team losing already two or three nil in that in that moment. He came in uh, and last game against against West Ham. I'm I'm sure he will improve. Has to to adapt as quick as he can um, with our football club, with Premier League again. He has to keep working really hard because the is it is really tough to get minutes to play games and to score goals at this level. And it's up to him to keep working hard. It's up to us to keep demanding from him and keep. Uh, Giving the right feedback for him to adapt uh, as quick as he can. Thank you. Okay. So we have about 10 minutes left of the press conference, so I'm keen to move on to written articles.